Breaking news, CP24 has just announced that the federal government has ended all mandates for travel in Canada, and will have the Arrive Can app available by option. Here's the clip followed by some of my previous reporting on this subject. We're following news from Ottawa where the federal government plans to drop its COVID-19 border requirements, including making the Arrive Can app optional. Sources confirmed to CTV News the federal government is expected to make the policy change by the end of the month. The government began allowing unvaccinated Canadians to board planes and trains heading to domestic and international locations in June, but travelers were still required to follow the quarantine requirements upon re-entry. ...basis for mandates, um, as has been indicated by officials, uh, why would your government institute a policy that infringed on Canadians' rights uh, that didn't have scientific basis and then call a snap election a couple days later? You mean the non-scientific mandates that was implemented by municipal governments? You mean the non-scientific based mandates that was implemented by provincial governments? You mean the non-scientific based mandates that was implemented by the private sector without required from government? You mean the non-scientific based mandates that was implemented by universities? You mean the non-scientific based mandates no, that was Minister, I'm talking by about the mandates implemented by the federal government at, at airports. Government. Um, but more and more Canadians uh, have seen them themselves uh, that the problems experienced here in Canada are different and they're substantially worse than anywhere else in the world. We know that Pearson and Montreal have been ranked number one and number two of worst airports in the world. That is an international embarrassment. And amongst these delays, the flight disruption, there's a lot of finger pointing. Airlines, airports, passengers themselves, as the minister uh, uh, alluded to in May. And we know a lack of capacity in security agents, customs agents, navigation services, and pandemic restrictions have all contributed to this chaos. Does the minister believe that the government bears any responsibility in any way of what has transpired this summer? Yes or no? I blame it on COVID. Uh, the vaccine mandate at our borders would lead to food shortage and empty shelves at our uh, grocery stores. She was wrong. In May, she claimed that the transportation vaccine mandate would, as causing the congestion, and if we stopped it, it would solve the congestion problem. Once again, she was wrong. So I can tell you, Mr. Chair, Canadians would forgive me why I'm skeptical about her. Traveler, a traveler recently left this public comment on TripAdvisor and I quote, just got back from a trip to Nevada flying out of Buffalo and I'm from Ontario. The airport is a dream, no lineups, quick through TSA checkpoints. The airport is super clean. He also added, it was a quick drive over to the airport. No COVID testing required. Crossing across the U.S. border is easy. They only ask if you're vaccinated and do not ask to see your test. I have crossed three times in the past two months. Same thing every time. Coming back across the border at the Rainbow Bridge, there are about 10 cars in front of us, and it took forever to get to a booth. So anyone thinking of ditching Pearson Airport and traveling down to Buffalo, do it. It's worth it. Minister, Niagara Falls is the number one tourism leisure destination in all of Canada. Yet every taxpayer dollar that Destination Canada spends in international markets, including our prime market, the United States, for our border communities, is being wasted by headlines that continually hit the press talking about Pearson Airport being the worst airport in the world. My colleague has just mentioned this. 60 countries around the world have abandoned all air travel pandemic restrictions, including most of our European allies. So why does this government continue to cling to these restrictions, which only do a disservice and disincentivize travel to this country? Good question. Mr. Chair, um, it, it helps no one to undermine confidence in our aviation sector and in our institution. I acknowledge the fact that in Canadian airports and airlines, we've witnessed and continue to witness some congestion similar to what we're seeing around the world, including in the United States. I also acknowledge that we have currently the only public health measures at our borders is requiring proof of vaccination, by the way, just like the U.S. and many countries around the world. Um, and work is being done on a daily basis to address these congestion issues, and the evidence prov proves that things are getting better. More work is needed, but things are getting better. I want to ask my honorable colleague if he really, really cares about the fluidity of our borders. Why did he and his colleagues support these blockaders who blocked our borders, who blocked our borders for weeks, 
prevented Canadians and Minister, others from... Minister, the, the question period is, 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 is to me now. And if you had done your job, Minister, and spoken to stakeholders, including the federally bridge that you regulate in Fort Erie, the Fort Erie Peace Bridge Authority, you appoint members of that commission. They can tell you about the border delays, about traffic being down 50 percent, Minister, yet wait times are up over more, almost over two hours, and yet you've done nothing. Minister, you have a hard time responding to correspondence from them, and they're your commission that you regulate. So why are you continuing to put incent disincentives to travel to this country? 40,000 people in my community work in the tourism sector and they're being impacted. And this, we've lost two tourism years because of COVID. This year, if we lose it, it's self-inflicted and there's nobody to blame but this Liberal government. When are you going to take actions? Who told you, Minister, that Arrive Can is not having any impact on wait times? Mr. Chair, uh, setting aside the bluster there, um, we continue to do everything we can to protect the health and safety of Canadians and facilitating smooth um, um, border crossing for all travelers. And we have had all hands on deck, whether it is at airports or land borders. My colleagues and I have been working with border communities to ensure that uh, they have the tools they need to facilitate safe and efficient border crossing. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, the con the public health measures that we have... Who have you spoken to, Minister? Similar, have similar, you spoken to the stakeholders? Have you spoken similar. to the bridge commissions? Have you uh, spoken to the tourism stakeholders? My understanding is the Liberal uh, caucus was meeting recently in Niagara Falls, the Ontario caucus. Did they meet with any stakeholders to hear from them directly about the impact that it's having on my community? Yes or no? Uh, Mr. Chair, I know my colleague Vance Badaway is here, a member of the committee, who's been a proud and a vocal advocate on behalf of the Niagara region, who has been a champion for the Great Lakes, who've been a champion for the communities, who have been working... Then why aren't you listening to them? ...collaboratively with uh, our ministers who've been working collaboratively yeah. with stakeholders. I have met with stakeholders. I've met with uh, uh, experts in tourism, and we will continue to do... Ten more seconds, please, can. Minister. To ensure Why does it take you months to respond to your own government agency that reports to you? A safe and efficient travel. It's unfortunate that the Conservatives never taken COVID seriously. It's unfortunate that the Conservatives supported these illegal blockades that blocked our borders and had a massive impact on border communities, have not apologized for it to this day. But we, on the other hand, Mr. Chair, are focused... Minister, they're thank going to hold much, a parade Minister, in Buffalo for you. you very much, Their Mr. Chamber Paul of Commerce is going to hold a parade for you. Um, I'm going to go back to Arrive Can. I think given the experience and the major criticism by almost every stakeholder across the industry from travel from tour to tourism uh, to those concerned with privacy, I'd like to know if the department has spoken to anyone outside of itself who supports it. Can you name anyone that you've consulted with uh, regarding Arrive Can? Uh, Mr. Chair, I might, I don't know which department you're referring to, the honorable members are referring to, but I Maybe I could offer one comment on this, and perhaps um, my colleagues at CBSA would like to comment. Uh, one, it, it's an important point of context that the, the Arrive Can operates at the land border and the air border, and here we're talking about air congestion. Uh, one of the, um, uh, of the very challenging situations we had in air congestion was a back, was uh, getting people uh, in, uh, through fast enough the Customs Hall at Pearson. And and uh, as as the ministers indicated uh, uh, earlier uh, in the ra in this ramp up of travel, you saw some significant uh, incidences of planes being held at the gate and and the metering of passengers into the customs hall. There was a, we have an airport uh, operations recovery group of airports, airlines, all the partners, and uh, including uh, transport, CBSA, PHAC. Cats, uh, and a lot of work was done to try and uh, uh, work through how to fix that. And a number of changes were made that have proven to be very successful because the actual uh, the, the 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 number of uh, holds for international arrivals has dropped 90 percent. It was like 300 a week in in May when we were at about 65,000 people arriving a day. It's now down to like 40 a week, even though we have 90,000 people per day arriving. A number of changes were made in the management of the customs hall. 
colleagues in CBSA. I, I had, sorry, can, I had a question about the. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. And, I'm gonna pipe in here because I only have uh, a couple minutes. So I'm gonna ask it. Ask, ask it a different way. Everybody here on this call has implied that the app is only necessary due to the mandate. So if the government removes the mandates one day, if it decides to do that, um, would the department's view uh, be that there is no need for ArriveCan? Uh, and and the, to answer the first question, uh, in that work, we worked with all of the partners and managed to get the Arrive Can app, uh, uh, app, the Arrive Can completion rate up much higher for international arriving passengers, and that was the work with the entire industry. So there was a lot of engagement with the industry on this. Uh, they worked with us, and that was one of the key success factors in declogging the customs hall. So there has been extensive discussion with our operating partners on ArriveCan, and the fact that very uh, um, that very that a, relative, a lot fewer people are arriving at the customs hall without it with it incomplete has been a key success factor in getting people through. Uh, on your second question, I think I would. Uh, it's difficult to speculate on the second question simply because we uh, it, it is given the policy the government has today in terms of the information that is being um, required from passengers to ensure safe international travel. It is the 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 completion of arrive can is a major force in the in in the gains and the efficiency in the airport we're seeing now. So it's 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 zero. Okay. I'm I'm going to go back to you. You said a, a 99 compliance rate with with ArriveCan. Um, that's what we've heard, or a plus 99 percent um, compliance with ArriveCan. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn your attention to somebody named Mark Weber. He's the president of the Customs and Immigration Union, representing border agents. Um, and he says that it's that high because of assistance on filling out ArriveCan. Uh, he says the number is more like 70 percent. So which number is true? Uh, and in terms of, of looking at that 99%, um, are you misleading? Uh, are, are you are, are you being misled on uh, on the compliance rate? Because there's a very big difference between those who come ready with it done uh, and CBSA agents being taken away from their work to help people do it, because that's what we're hearing. Um, I would say one thing and then quickly turn it over to Mr. Vinette on this. And and uh, uh, the, on, on the premise of your question, uh, agree. And in fact, a lot of work was done in the context of international arrivals in air to get the uh, to get passengers to complete arrive can before they went to the customs hall, because if they went into the customs hall without arrive can done, it clogged up uh, an extremely busy part of Pearson Airport. So getting that rate of completion up before they go in the hall was was one of the key reasons why we've been able to have uh, make such progress in the the flow of international arrivals at Pearson. In terms of the statistics, I would turn it over to a colleague at CBSA to comment further. Unfortunately, you, uh, we don't have time. Excuse me, Mr. Vinette, on a podcast. I'm sorry, Mr. Vinette, we don't have